how do you actually improve gut health by detoxifying your gut? It sounds unbelievably clickbaity, but it's a very real thing. There's something that's called bile acid sequestration. Bile acids can bind to microplastics, to other fat soluble toxins. Okay, these are very, very real things, okay? And we've seen in the evidence, and I'll talk about that in a minute, particularly with microplastics, that microplastics end up in the stool, showing that they do pass through our gut along with many other things. So we're gonna talk about how you can potentially clear microplastics from the gut or at least move them faster through the gut, but we're also gonna talk about how you can do this with other things. And it's not just eating more fiber, right? That's part of it. But one of the key things we need to look at is A, our gut barrier integrity. Okay, so when we're looking at the world of microplastics, particularly, it's a good example, is so much stuff starts in the gut, remember. Okay, so it's all starting there with what we consume. We see that microplastics absorb just like food absorbs. The smaller the particle, the easier it absorbs, and the easier it gets taken up by all tissues in the body. Very similar with other things that are coming through our gut. Okay, even ingredients, even more nefarious things that maybe we don't like in our food, whatnot. It's a very real thing. So improving that gut barrier, that tight junction, is something I talk about all the time. People focus on the gut microbiome, and that's critical too, but that is so out there in terms of the research. The best thing that we can do there is eat fermented foods, probiotic-rich foods, and take a probiotic. But other than that, we don't know a whole lot, right? The gut barrier, we know a fair bit about. We know that that is protecting us, right? So how do we move things through faster? Okay, we're gonna come back to gut barrier in a second. Turns out that soluble fiber, not regular fiber, but soluble fiber, has unique properties with bile acid sequestration. We'll talk about that here and how that works. Uh, by the way, real quick, if you could drop a comment for the algorithm, it really helps these videos out. YouTube just likes that engagement. Please, if you could do anything, just drop a quick comment. And also hit that subscribe button. We've got videos dropping just about, well, literally every single day, sometimes twice a day. Okay, so bile acid sequestration. When you have soluble fiber in the equation, what happens is that actually draws a binding to bile acids. Okay, bile acids not only help with fat assimilation and utilization, but they also help remove things and move things along. And again, one of those things I talked about, bile acid sequestration, where we're actually binding the microplastics and binding the fat-soluble toxins. This not only improves the transit time, but it also improves what is removed from the gut. So if things are staying in the gut for a long period of time, you have a risk of absorbing things that aren't so good. We've all heard the sort of thing about people that are getting constipated where stuff is trapped for a long period of time. Yeah, you do reabsorb some of those not so good things. That's why being constipated is definitely not good, among a lot of other reasons why, right? So the faster, not too fast, but the faster that things move through the intestinal tract and we have a good solid absorption, things are working, the villi are working the way they're supposed to in the intestinal tract and absorbing nutrients, everything can move through smoothly and pretty quickly, you're having less time for negative implications. That combined with the overall gut integrity plays a very important role with what absorbs itself. So what does soluble fiber look like? We're talking small amounts here too. We're talking things like chia, we're talking things like flax, we're talking things like even some acacia, some inulin, very simple things. Soluble corn fiber can work with this. Uh, those are all important things. I put a link down below for Thrive Market. They've got a lot of really interesting ways to get soluble fiber in that aren't just in a bunch of garbage foods. Interestingly enough, that's a 30% off discount link for Thrive Market. What's really important to know is that they've been ahead of the curve with the ingredients, right? So while so many of us are now focusing on what other countries are doing better as far as food additives and ingredients or lack thereof, and we're trying to move that way in the US, well, the interesting thing is that Thrive Market's been focusing on that for a long time. So the foods you're gonna find on Thrive's website for online grocery ordering, they're gonna be more like what you would see in Europe, okay? Because they're abiding to a different standard than just what maybe might be out there for regular foods. It's kind of scary what kind of nefarious, ominous things can get put in our food, and we're starting to see that now. So Thrive's ahead of the curve, and they're making that accessible for other people, which is really good for all people in all corners of the states, which is usually hard to get those kinds of foods. So that link down below gets you 30% off your entire first grocery order, then it gets delivered to your doorstep, and you also get a free gift when you use that link down below. So 30% off plus a free gift on your grocery order delivered to your doorstep. Now, the other piece with the gut is we do have to look at the hydration piece. Okay, 
not only does hydration end up helping move things through the gut, but let me give you an added bonus of what happens. I can't remember the actual study. We'll link to it down below. I can't remember the name of the paper. But essentially, they gave subjects 500 milliliters of water, or they gave them 50 milliliters of water, or they gave them 500 milliliters, half a liter of water with salt, like a saline solution. What they found is that all of them had hydration effects, but only the pure water increased metabolic rate, resting energy expenditure by 25% for 60 minutes after consumption. That's right, drinking water increases your energy expenditure and can cause you to burn fat. Why? Because it changed the osmolarity. So because the osmolarity was now different when the water was absorbed, because there was a gradient between the actual mineralization of the body versus what was just taken in, that actually altered thermoregulation within where it's absorbed that increased resting energy expenditure. So not only does water have to elevate to body temperature, which takes energy, but it also has to change gradient and osmolarity. What's interesting is the saline did not have this effect, which means that saline is probably better for overall hydration, which is why you consume electrolytes and stuff when you're working out, but it didn't have the same resting energy expenditure increase. So yes, hydrating literally burns fat, which in itself has a potential detoxification effect, right? But you're also talking about ways that you're moving things through the gut faster. The more hydrated you are, the more you increase motility and the more you improve transit time. So although it seems so elementary to drink water, to flush, it becomes increasingly more important when you've done these other steps, improving gut barrier integrity, adding soluble fiber, now you're adding the water so everything can move through the gut. We're talking about having as clean of a gut as we possibly can. Now the other piece, something that I've talked about before, is taking a break from food. We do not realize that the only time our gut actually goes to work is when we stop eating. Like when we are eating, it's a different ballgame. It goes to work in a different way. But when we stop eating is when the gut motility increases because it's regenerating cells. That is its time to repair. Think about it. It is getting broken down and used and damaged and <laughs> in the way that it should when we consume food. But when we take a break is when it kicks into overdrive and actually starts to repair. Even if that means not having a slip of a food, like not even an M&M, give your body a break and let the gut do what it needs to do, especially for the mucosal layer and for the lining, which like I'm saying, that is the most important line of defense between you and things that absorb. And we know this evidence to be true with microplastics because we know how they absorb. And that's something that we can all agree is a problem. Okay, Everyone, even the most granular evidence-based scientists that are usually so let's just be real boring and how they look at things are saying, yes, microplastics are a problem. So we see the evidence there, seal the gut the best you can. Okay, do these things, hydrate and take a break from food. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you tomorrow.